Hollywood and fence pickets. Those are the hot words in the YouTube woodworking world right now. There's lots of creators making stuff out of them, and I'm here to jump on that bandwagon. I made this birdhouse from half of a fence picket and a little bit of scrap 2x4. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a great project to do with your children, and it's a great project to sell. You can probably get about $40 or $50 out of this one alone. So let's go and jump into it. So for this project, I'm going to use about half of this six inch wide by eight foot long uh, fence picket. This is a five eighths inch thick one. I just got this from my local Lowe's and I only need about half of it for one birdhouse. We are gonna need a, a scrap of two by four as well, probably 24 inches or less. I don't even remember exactly how much I used um, because I actually used some scraps that I had cut off from another project for the roof and the steeple. Here I'm just planing the fence picket down to get the two sides smooth. Um, they're a little bit furry from the store, so just smoothing that out is a lot easier with a planer than a sander. And then we're just gonna square up this end and then we're gonna mark our pieces. We need two 11 inch pieces. Those are gonna be the ends and then a 10 inch piece for the base. And then the sides are eight inches a piece. So we're gonna cut all those pieces here. And of course there are gonna be a set of plans up on my website if you guys wanna run over there and download those. Now here I'm just gonna smooth out the both edges. So I'm just cutting off probably a 16th of an inch on each pass here, but I'm doing it to all the pieces and I'm not moving the fence until I finish all the pieces. That's very important in order to get consistent. You see nice smooth edges there. Now we're just flipping the pieces over, moving the fence just a hair and just slicing that very edge. Now I've got two clean edges that are nice and straight. Now the two ends are gonna have a sharp angle cut to them. What I did is I just set it up on the uh, base there, how it's gonna be assembled together, and then I marked where the top of the walls are. And then I just went from there to the center at the very top of the piece. Now here you can see in order to get the two ends exactly the same, I'm just taping them together with some painter's tape, and then we're gonna take them over to the bandsaw and cut along those lines that we just marked. Now this could easily be done with a at the table saw or with a circular saw or a jigsaw. So now we're going to take it out of the tape and then we can go about assembling our birdhouse here. Now of course we're going to use wood glue with it. I don't really believe that's optional. Technically you could do it without glue if you're just using screws or something, but I would highly recommend to the wood glue. It'll help seal it up, not let water in. I'm using a brad nailer here, but you can use the regular hammer and nails if you prefer. The brad nails do not really give strength. We're relying on the wood glue for the strength and the brad nails just hold it in place until the wood glue dries. Now, one thing I do want to point out here is that the end cap there, they see the end piece. It is not sitting on top of the base. It is actually uh, just the base is butted up against that end piece. That's going to be important here. Um, in a second, you can see the other piece is going to be sitting on top of the base. And I'm about to show you how we mark for that. As you can see the gap there, doesn't line up. So you just set it beside and then you just use your pencil to mark how tall the base is on that. And then you just go cut that. It's pretty simple. It's a very accurate way. And that way you can always make sure it's correct and you don't have to measure anything. Here we are gonna mark for the hole for the entry. The bottom of the hole is two and a half inches up from the bottom of the board. Um, and then I used a two inch hole saw here to drill. And I would recommend you start it on one side and then flip it over, go to the other side and drill all the way through. All right, now that we have our hole drilled, I'm just gonna sand it real quick. Um, we're gonna do more sanding at the end, but I just, there was some rough edges, so I did that. And then we're just gonna glue and brad nail that in place. You don't really need to nail the bottom. I guess you can if you want to, but I didn't do that here. All right, so now it is time to get out that scrap two by four I talked about earlier. 
These pieces that I'm using in this video, they're an inch and a half wide, and starting out here, I believe they were three eighths of an inch. They might have been half inch, but I'm pretty sure they're three eighths of an inch thick. I'm planing them down to a quarter of an inch. Um, if you are just cutting uh, from a piece of two by four, I would cut probably three sixteenths of an inch wide strips if you can on your table saw. Uh, these here I'm using because they were leftovers from another project, so I figured I'll just plane these down and I can use these, cut them at length. Now real quick while you're watching me playing these down, very fascinating stuff, I did want to go ahead and comment on, I'm sure what people are going to be saying in the comments down below. Pressure treated wood is toxic and we shouldn't use it. Well, the way I see it is, for well for one, back in 2003 the really toxic pressure treated wood was banned. It's no longer uh, done the way it used to be. Before it had large amounts of arsenic in it and that is extremely toxic and not good to use. Um, the pressure treated wood today does not have that and it's considered safe to use for garden beds and porches and kids playhouses and stuff um so i'm not really that concerned about it being a big issue uh so i think for birdhouses it's gonna be fine especially when you consider that fences which birds are constantly sitting on are made out of pressure treated wood so Here we are trimming our roof pieces to length. Here I'm setting up a quick stop block just so I can make sure they're all identical and I don't have to measure each piece. I wanna say these are a quarter of an inch longer than the base because they're gonna overhang in the back and that way they just line up with the front of the base, how it sticks out, it's like a little porch area. So just cut them about a quarter of an inch longer so you can have a quarter inch overhang at the back of the birdhouse. And you're gonna need 10 pieces here if they're an inch and a half wide. All right, so now we are ready to install the shingle pieces on the roof. What I'm doing is I'm putting glue along that lower edge and then along the end piece there where the shingles are touching. And then I'm just using a brad nail to hold it in place until that glue dries. And on the next rows, as you can see how I'm doing, we're overlapping the bottom of the top piece there with the previous piece we installed. And you run a piece of glue along that previous piece. And then we just brad nail them in. That glue will dry and hold fairly well. I've never had any issues with it coming apart. Um, it is important to overlap like this and start at the bottom because if you don't, then water will run inside, right? So the way I'm doing it here, the rain will hit the top piece, run down onto the next one, which run down onto the next and all the way down so it doesn't get inside our birdhouse. Same way they make real roofs. Now this top cap, um, there is gonna be a gap up there. The wood glue hopefully will fill that gap, but um, you're basically gonna put one side on, as you saw me do right there, and then you're gonna come around to the other side and just put it flat across there. So the very top point there is just basically gonna be a butt joint. All right, so now the only other piece we gotta fit is our steeple, and I'm just getting the angles on it just by holding it up to the end of the roof there. Uh, just tracing that and then cut it out on the bandsaw and then we will just simply glue it and brad nail it in place and then our church is built and it'll just ready for decoration. All right, so that's our completed birdhouse. As you saw, it was very simple, it was very easy. Now, technically it's not actually completed because you really do need to decorate them, right? I would not, I would not try to sell this in this state. It's just simply not worth it for me. Um, I might get 20 bucks for this if I'm lucky. As opposed to a painted one, I can usually get 40 to 60, depending on how well I do. Now this one here, I went super basic, super simple white with a cathedral shaped door accent on the front here that's just quarter inch plywood i just cut it out of my bandsaw over there and then i'm actually still in the process of this part but i'm painting cathedral style windows on the side this is just a classic little tiny church in the middle of who knows where and uh that's a very popular design people love to buy them 
So I would recommend having some sort of church design. I would also recommend carrying, if you're gonna make the, produce these to sell, a barn design would be a good idea. And then just houses, right? So like houses, I've seen several that are houses with porches, houses with all sorts of things. You could even offer custom birdhouses to people. They send you a picture of their house and you send them a birdhouse that looks like their house. That would be pretty cool. And I bet you, you could charge way more than $60 for it. The one thing I will say, just real quick before I let you guys go, if for some reason you start your project and you realize that your picket or whatever is wetter than you thought it was, definitely let it dry before you try to paint it. So this one here, it's a little wetter than I thought it was gonna be. I'm probably gonna let it sit around for like another couple days before I try to paint it. Um, if it's too wet, the paint just simply won't stick. All right guys, that is a classic church style birdhouse. It's a simple project. It's a great project to do with your children. I highly recommend that. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, I think you're gonna really like this one here as well. Uh, so go check that one out. I'll see you guys.